Members of Congress have moved to strengthen a funding ban that targets abortion across the globe by including it in a foreign aid bill that they sent to the House floor this week. The measure would shore up the Trump administration's so-called global gag rule. It's a policy that prohibits American aid dollars from going to any health organization that advocates, studies, or even mentions a need for safe abortion. The effects are already being felt in the African nation of Malawi, where advocates say women need more access to the medical procedure. This song is part of a campaign to prevent deaths from unsafe abortion. The procedure is illegal in Malawi, so many women go to a local witch doctor or try to abort at home. When these women come down with infections and bleeding, which happens often, they come to the female ward. The district hospital in Kasungu is the only one serving about 600,000 people. On average, in a day, sometimes we handle, on average, about 10 women related to abortion cases. Sylvester Zimba is a nurse at the female ward of the hospital who specializes in post-abortion care. Even if this woman is saying this is a simultaneous abortion, but after evacuating the remains, you actually see some objects, you really know to say it's an induced abortion. So what is an example of an object that you might find? Yeah, sometimes they use uh, spokos, bicycle spokos. Sometimes they use uh, cassava sticks. Sometimes they use, uh, they use uh, herbs. All sorts of funny objects, they come with them here. Most of them are afraid because when you are discovered you have conducted abortion or you have aborted, the police knows they can take you and get arrested. So you're keeping their secret? Yeah, we'll keep their secret. The penalty for having an abortion is 14 years in prison. But a proposed bill would decriminalize abortion in cases of rape and incest, fetal anomaly and mental health. Crispin Sibande, the national director at IPASS, a nonprofit that fights for safe abortion worldwide, is leading the charge on the bill. He says Donald Trump just made his job a lot harder. The U.S. election has had a huge impact. If you look at the churches, individuals that oppose abortion, they're saying, oh, even the U.S. opposes abortion. Malawi, we should Malawi do it. Three days into the Trump administration, the president signed a policy that blocks money to any international group that so much as mentions abortion. Reproductive rights activists call it the global gag rule. Every Republican president since Ronald Reagan has enforced the policy, but the Trump administration went much further. The so-called gag rule affects all $8.8 billion of U.S. global health care assistance. U.S. never provides funds for abortion whether it is Democrat government, whether it's a public government, they don't provide funds for abortion services. But during Obama's time, you can get money on malaria, but you can also have an abortion. It is sealing their mouths. Don't talk about abortion if you don't get U.S. money. But for a country like Malawi, that's a huge problem. That's like you, you, you want to deliberately send women to the grave. But the opposition to Malawi's abortion bill has cheered Trump's support for the funding ban, including these Christian activists. Most of the girls that do abortions are coming from our churches. Pastor Nick Chukwera is a leading opponent of the bill. Donald Trump spoke the language of uh, not, not uh, encouraging, promoting abortion. That sort of brought a tide of confidence and boldness to some of us. May God be with Donald Trump, because he is promoting what the Bible promotes. Many of the groups who stand to lose U.S. government funds for, quote, promoting abortion, say they won't back down. That includes the Family Planning Association of Malawi, which runs birth control clinics across the country. This clinic is 90% funded by USID funding. The moment the USID funding pulls out, we are on the verge of closing. So it's birth control, it's antibiotics against sexually transmitted infections, yes. HIV treatment. Yes. That all goes away. Y yes. In total, we are losing about one million US dollars in a year, and we'll be losing about 70 staffs, and our services will be reduced. But sometimes it's good to stand for our values. 
In Lilongwe, Malawi's capital alone, Mabendera estimates that 600,000 women will lose access to birth control because of the Trump policy. Advocates know what's going to happen next. Under the Bush-era gag rule, abortion rates actually rose in sub-Saharan Africa. It will definitely increase the number of criminal abortions that will occur and therefore increasing the number of patients that we have here and increasing the maternal mortality. So less money for family planning groups if they choose to advocate for safe abortion equals? More unwanted pregnancies, more unplanned pregnancies, more illegal abortions, more maternal mortality rates. More women dying? Yes. Sylvester Zimba, the nurse, can barely keep up with the number of women who are already having unsafe abortions. He knows it's about to get worse. The gag rule isn't supposed to affect emergency care. But in May, Zimba was told that because of the Trump administration's policy, he was losing his USAID funding anyway. I was told openly because of the new administration, they are no longer interested in funding issues related to abortions. So when you hear the U.S. government say this is a pro-life policy, what's your reaction? Yeah, I didn't support that because I'm also a Christian. I'm a Catholic, I'm also a Christian. But now, that pro-life approach it's different when a woman comes here who has already aborted and is going through complications. I can't even count how many have died. So many have died. 